We are back, episode 99. Next I week, we'll hit 100, which is wild. Let's talk about that 100th episode while, we're, uh, while we've got everybody's attention. We're doing we, uh, two $250 gift cards. Um, the first one, we're doing a par three. All you have to do is is hit the green. You get three shots. If you hit the green, you're in the raffle for it. On the putting, um, you get three putts. You sink one, you're in the raffle. You don't have to stay around. You can just come, hang out, and leave so you're not stuck and just watching people. But I think that's the fairest way to give. No matter the skill level, we'll do like a 110-yard par three, something easy. And a bonus, the more times you hit the green and or make the putt in those three shots the more times your name gets added to the rack. Yes. And we're going to have some gear to give away. we got some extra hats and koozies and towels and cups. And we got a lot of stuff to give yeah, away. Yeah, we got stuff to give away. I told <laughs> Casey the other day, we got a bunch of we're not selling it, so yeah. I don't want to pay sales tax. So let's just give it away. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I'm uh, I'm excited for it. It's going to be a big, big event down at Moon Golf, which that's a great segue into uh, our favorite sponsor this, uh, ever. Yeah, Moon they Golf. Uh, <laughs> they they have uh, been very gracious to us the past year and a half, and we're very thankful for them. Uh, they have amazing deals, equipment, people uh, in their stores. Uh, we are located near the Auburn store. They have two other stores um, down in Florida. Um, we uh, we very much appreciate it. Every time we walk in, everybody's helpful. They, uh, they want to talk to you. They want to know how your day's going. They want to know uh, what you're coming in the store looking for. So um, they're, they're willing to help you. And they've got the best technology around here in our area for sure to uh, find exactly what you need and get you in the right stuff. And then just, there's always someone there. Like you never have to and walk in and be like, everybody's tied up. Someone's there willing to talk. And even if you're just wanting to shoot the breeze or yeah, just get out of the house. We got our you resident employee who's not on here, <laughs> Mitchell, but he goes yeah. daily. <laughs> daily they or weekly? Never, I know it's every uh, week. Out. They won't ever go out of business. That's what I was going to say. They won't ever go out of business with him going in there. He goes and talks no. to them, keeps them company. But yeah, but so uh, next week, April 30th. Exactly a week from today, uh, we're gonna do five Eastern to seven Eastern. Like so it. it'll be till they close. Um, come, we'll be there. Meet us, greet us, give us Take your some subscription home. on YouTube. And it'll be a fun time. And, I'm excited. But <clears throat> we've got a great guest tonight. I mean, uh, a lot of knowledge of keeping up, keeping track of um, just golf course maintenance. He's got the knowledge, um, definitely informed us about stuff we didn't even, never even think about. So um, any casual player like us doesn't know what really goes into keeping pristine golf courses the way that they I don't are. have a clue how to keep my grass green, much less <laughs> something yeah, like that. Either. Yeah, so uh, without further ado, let's jump into that interview right now. All right, guys, tonight uh, we have a very special guest again. Uh, we're, we're like 10 for 10 like episodes, I think, having a really good guest on. Uh, tonight we have Garrett Tillman. He uh, operates at the prestigious Green Island Country Club in Columbus, Georgia, right from us. Um, he's superintendent there. Uh, he has his uh, DCSAA Class A golf course superintendent. Um, he's graduated with Associate of Science in Golf Course Operation and Grounds Management. Um, I've seen a lot of his work that they do around the golf course on uh, his YouTube channel, The Superintendent's Perspective. And uh, I got linked up with him uh, through good buddy Brent Oliver that works there uh, also. So uh, welcome to the show, Garrett. Appreciate it. Thank y'all for having me. So first and foremost, how long have you worked at Green Island and how did you get to your position there? So I've been at Green Island a little over five years. Um, I came here from Golden Ocala and uh, I don't know if if, uh, that name rings a bell with you guys, but uh, Ocala, Florida, kind of north central Florida. It's a 
uh, club. It's got it's got some replica holes on it. It's a really really cool track. Um, they've actually expanded to 27 holes since I left that facility. But I was there for like two and a half years, almost three years, something like that. Um, and then before that, I was actually up in Memphis, uh, Spring Creek Ranch, uh, which is another uh, really really cool track. So just kind of made my way uh, back to Florida. I'm originally from Jacksonville, and uh, it's somewhat uh, militaristic uh, how you have to move around. You just kind of follow the jobs wherever they're wherever they're available. So. As an assistant, uh, this job came available. Uh, Green Island's got a rich history. You've made your way around military lifestyle, essentially, just taking jobs wherever they come. And now you're in a prestigious role at Green Island. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, we're we're not uh, super high end, but I would say we're middle of the road. We're, we're definitely not bottom of the pack at all. Um I I love this golf course, man. This is uh this is a unique. If you if you guys ever played here? I've never made it. Out. I know the first time I heard of Green Island, I was working at Synovus, and they were talking about um where the CEO and everybody plays, and they're like, oh, they're members at Green Island. I said, where? And this was before I started playing golf. I was like, where is Green Island? And then I looked at it on the map. I said, oh, it's it's right here in Columbus, and. Since then, I've known it as like where the big dogs at Sonovas play. So I know it's got to have <laughs> some type of status. Yeah, it's it's a good track. Um, we have to fix that. You guys need to come down and and uh, and play team one day for sure. I would love to have you down. But yeah, it's it's a it's a really cool track. When you get down here and you see it, it's just kind of like where is you know where am I? Um, <clears throat> Triple C is the other club in town. That's, that's kind of our main competitor. Um, I mean, they're, you know, we're friends with those guys. I mean, they're, it's not hostile or anything like that, but, um, they're, it's just two different properties. Um, you get up to North Columbus, all of a sudden you get into some rolling hills and then you get on the green Island property and it's, it's, it's hilly. Um, it's, it's very hilly. So it's a very unique piece and, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun, a lot of fun to work on. When you're I running a course, I know oh, you can go ahead, Brady. Sorry. No, uh, what I was going to say is I don't want to get Brent in trouble, but he sends me a lot of Snapchats throughout the day. Uh, right. <laughs> and honestly, I've like, <laughs> I've told him multiple times. I'm like, he'll send me a picture of like a green, you know, looking back up the fairway and everything. I'm like, dude, that place looks like a mini Augusta. Like it, that's what I tell him all the time. Like just from the pictures I've seen, I'm like, dude, it looks, uh, you know, well kept as it could be. I appreciate that. I, you know, obviously we're not, um, we're not quite on their level. We're close. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but <laughs> it, I mean, it really, it really, it really is kind of, you could call it a West Georgia Augusta. Um, the layout, not, not necessarily the, the shape that we keep it in or anything like that, but it, it is, it's just, it is, it's a, it's a very unique, uh, property. Um, and to be honest with you, I, I, I don't, that's not bad to me. I don't, he's, he's not in trouble for that at all. Um, we've got a great group of guys here. That's the reason for our success. Um, the guys take pride in, in their jobs, constantly taking pictures. You know, we've got a, um, a group text where guys will, you know, chat with each other, even, even, you know, when they're at home sitting, watching TV and stuff, and they're constantly sending each other pictures, bragging on the golf course, bragging on each other. Um, yeah. you, know, you got a team like this, it's almost impossible to fail. I mean, we just have a really, really good group of guys. That's really, that's come around. Uh, really in the past probably 18 months where that's that's really become the status quo. When you run a course like that and you have the the country club in town, is it more, because I'm sure it's not so much we want every single person, is it there's a piece of pie for the, the members around to pick a course and you just do everything you can to make yours the best, the most desirable piece of pie? So what I would say to that is the way I look at it, I don't want to be better than Triple C or better than another golf course because they're not good. I want them to be amazing and people come here and still say, wow, you know, Triple C or whatever, you know, whoever XYZ club is really good, but Green Island's better. Um, mm-hmm. It's a it's a friendly, you know, rivalry. Um, it's, you know, I don't, I don't want anybody to fail. Um, those guys are, are my fellow superintendents as an association, you know, we're, we're, we're brothers. Um, if he called me 
uh, you know, Keith Bodine is the superintendent over there. If he called me tomorrow and needed anything, I would bend over backwards to help him out. And we have, we've shared equipment before. Um, we've had, we've had stuff go down and they bailed us out and vice versa. So, um, it's a, it's a friendly, a friendly rivalry. I'm sure he would say the same thing about us. What's a, um, like when you're getting there in the morning, you're setting your crew up. I, I don't know if you're getting there as early as they do, but what's a, like a routine prep day, like on the course, uh, like when there's just going to be a mostly member play like throughout the week or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So we, um, you know, my, both my assistants get here about five 30. I'm, I'm usually a little bit later than that. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm I'm here late enough in the day. I don't need to be here 30 or 45 minutes early. I'm just not that guy. Um, I'll I'll get here 10 or 15 minutes early. But um, you know, we'll get here in the morning, uh, 6 a.m. We start. Uh, we have a, a morning meeting, and hopefully, you know, if all goes well, 10 minutes we're out the door. Uh, guys are you know we're mowing, rolling. Um, if we're doing a full course prep, so we're mowing all the short grass, basically all all fairways uh, approaches, rollouts. Um, that's something that I changed when I got here. Uh, we've got some pretty expansive rollouts, some tight areas around greens. It, the golf course isn't terribly long. And so, you know, one of the biggest things a, a golf course superintendent can do um, within his own power is go out there with a paint gun and change up mow patterns, change up, you know, your contouring and stuff like that. And that will, that will affect uh, change on the golf course in a positive or a negative way or make it harder, or make it easier. Um, so yeah, uh, uh, but anyways, get back to, uh, morning setup. Um, you know, raking bunkers is very, very important to me. I'm a big bunker guy. Um, I've been to a lot of really good clubs and played golf and the bunkers be poor. And it's probably because I, I, I hit into bunkers a lot. Um, so I'm very familiar with them, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, you, you go to this really, really high end club and your expectations are such and you get into a bunker and you're like, what, what in the world? Um, so they're kind of a overlooked, uh, amenity or a part of the golf course. In my opinion, it's just, it's something that can make or break the round. Uh, you know, I don't know. I, I, I they're just that they're important to me. So we, we rake bunkers every single day. We never skip a day on bunkers. Um, every two weeks, uh, we go through and we edge them. Um, we add sand where it's needed, but bunkers are, you know, they need it. We, we need a, a bunker refresh. Um, they're probably about 24, 25 years old now, um, uh, from a, a construction perspective, but, uh, you just kind of have to work with what you got. That's not always a possibility to, uh, reconstruct things as, as needed. Uh, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much a, a day and it's, it's not, uh, it's exciting to us. I'm sure from the outside, it's probably not terribly exciting, but. We get, we get into it. Uh, there, we, you know, uh, about two year, two or three years ago, uh, we went from using cell phones to bought radios for everybody. And the guys there, the radios are there for communication, but they're also, they, they, uh, they start a lot of crap. There's a lot of crap talking going on on the radios in the morning. So it's a good time. We enjoy it. We enjoy each other. We enjoy being on the golf course, watching the sunrise, seeing nature just come alive all around us and, and, uh, being a part of something bigger than ourselves. I feel like bunkers can really change your perspective on a round. If you um, go somewhere, you land in the bunker, your first thought is, oh, no, I'm here. But then when you get in and it's like beach sand, yeah. you're like, oh, this is well-maintained. <laughs> I'm getting out of this. <laughs> you already, your confidence level goes up so much just because sure. you're like, I can do a real golf shot out of this instead of somewhere they don't maintain the bunkers, it rains, it's almost like compacted mud. Right. Right. So and I'm, something cool I'm a that bunker appreciator. <laughs> we appreciate it. Um, now something cool that we did, um, that's unique, not to, you know, it's, we're not the only ones that have this, but I would say at a club of our level, this is very unique. We have bunker irrigation. Um, so, uh, in 2020 we did a, um, irrigation renovation and I got, um, I'm very blessed at the club that we're at. We, we don't get told no very often. Um, of course I don't ask completely, uh, ridiculous questions. Um, but in that, uh, irrigation renovation, um, I requested that we put, uh, you know, small rotors in all the bunkers. So we're able to keep the golf course firm and fast and still maintain moisture in just inside the bunkers. 
And that is huge um, when it comes from a bunker maintenance perspective. Guys jumping down in the bunker um, first thing in the morning, you know, if it is really, really dry and guys are trying to blow debris out of the bunkers, you're blowing sand all over the place, then you lose your consistency. Um, you know, areas get too thin. And when we're able to run water, we run water in bunkers almost every night. Not not, not much, just five to ten minutes, but that's enough to keep the surface, um, that surface moisture. And when you get into it, it's it it's nice. It's nice. I would have never even... I don't know, like that's thought about that. I thought about, yeah. So that that's very interesting there. Like that's that's information that we definitely, I guess you know, casual players like ourselves and people that listen, I, you know, we would never think of anything like that either. Right. Yeah, it's it's unique. It's it's not you don't see that everywhere. I think you're probably going to start seeing that more and more. Um, it stuff that, that works at the bigger clubs usually trickles down to the smaller clubs. You know those ideas. Right. So. Makes me want to ride 18 holes and just sit beside you and you go, that's what we did here. That's what we do here. <laughs> yeah. This is why this works. This is why it doesn't. Do you have many members uh, make suggestions like, hey, have you thought about cutting this different or maybe doing the green a little different here or anything like that? Or is most people just uh, enjoying the round? I, I think the majority of people are enjoying the rounds. I, I certainly have... Um... I would say five to 10 members that are overly enthusiastic about agronomy. Um, and I, I probably in another life, they would, they would do what I do <laughs> um, because they, they're, they know enough to be dangerous, ask a lot of good questions. Um, and, but for the most part, and I, I really do think that's why we are successful is they tend to let us do what we do. Um, which isn't always the case at some country clubs. Sometimes you're, you're micromanaged to a point where you, sometimes you make the wrong uh, decisions just because that's what's expected of you. Um, again, that I'm very, very blessed, uh, to have the membership that we have. We have a good membership. We have a strong membership. You know, we have 900 and 70 something members, I think, um, I think around 400, uh, golfing memberships. So it, it's a big, it, there's a lot of people to, to, uh, to please here, but for the most yeah. part, they're, yeah, for the most part, um, they are, they're very appreciative and very supportive of everything that we do on the golf course. What's it like, um, taking care of like, uh, I feel like right now we're getting into peak golf season, uh, masters just happened. Uh, I feel like that's when everybody, like if, if you haven't been playing during the winter, you're dusting off your clubs now. And, uh, so what's it like keeping the, uh, the course in like tip top shape, like all the way to the end of the year, like starting now? So I think that's, that's probably one of those things that's, um, misunderstood about what we do. Keeping the golf course, you can, you, you know, we, obviously we strive to keep it and as close to perfect. Uh, form as we can, but that's just impossible. It, it is, um, whether it's, um, a rain event, some sort of, some sort of weather system moves through and destroys the golf course, or, um, you get an unusual cold spell, um, late into spring. And, um, that is going to affect, uh, everything really, it changes everything. Um, sometimes it can be for the good, you know, a, a really hard cold spell late in spring will speed the greens up because they, it slows growth down. Um, but then that also, you have to react to it with our growth regulators and things like that that we apply to the greens. Um, everything can be, uh, tricky when it comes to, to timing and all that. So, I mean, it, it, we try to keep it as close to perfect as we can throughout the year. But, um, I, I, I would say that our member, for the most part, our membership is very satisfied with how we keep the golf course. You know, I'm, if the greens are under 11, I'm not happy. Um, I really want to be 11 and a half or better, um, tournament play. You know, we've got member member coming up this weekend in three days. Um, and we're already making game plans. We're most likely going to be coming in, um, in the evenings and maybe doing a single cut and a roll, then double cutting and rolling in the morning, trying to get speeds up. Um, so it, you know, we, we really want to be at 12 or better for, for a, uh, for a tournament, but that's some people, you know, some people don't like that. Some people that's not perfection. Some people that's going the opposite direction. Once you get a 12, 12 and a half, that's too fast. 
they want them, they want to slow them <laughs> down. But for the most part, our membership um, is, you know, things that we do on the golf course are controlled by our green committee. Um, we have SOPs that we have to follow. And, you know, that's 11 and a half, 12. That's, that's where we want the greens at. So I want to uh, kind of always wanted to know this answer. Um, is there a day in the, during the week, uh, like where you would um, put the pins in maybe more challenging places, like on the weekend, is it more, usually more challenging than uh, during the week? So there's not a specific time. Um, I actually came up with an idea a, a, a couple of years ago that it never really got off the ground, but I really wanted to introduce what I called Fierce Fridays, which is where you better bring your game because the, the course is going to have teeth today. Um, and I, and Fridays, you know, it's, you don't have a lot of weekend play. You don't have a lot of guys bringing their wives out on Fridays. So it's, it's a day that kind of gets mixed in with the week. And I felt it wouldn't make anybody too different, too terribly uh, upset, but I'm naturally a, a pin tucker. I mean, don't, don't go, don't go uh pin hunting when you're, when you're playing green Island. Um, I, there's a there's a joke uh I've got um um uh, Mr. Plager uh I don't know if you guys know him um I believe he won the senior amateur um quite a quite a few years back and uh he comes out and plays and every time he sees me he's always uh he always comes by and he's like you know there's there's a portion of the green in the middle where you can put flags like you don't have, <laughs> don't all have to be on the edges um but that's that's kind of the golf the golf course's defense like I said we're only 6500 yards um, it's not terribly long. Um, I will say that when a lot of collegiate events and stuff come, uh, guys come and play, um, it's the, on the scorecard, it doesn't look that difficult, but then all of a sudden we, you know, we have guys that come out and play a three round event and two under wins it. And these are college golfers. Um, it, the golf course can have some teeth, especially when the rough gets up. Um, and we, you know, we tighten up fairway cuts and everything like that. It's, it can it can be challenging. Uh, your second shot, the ball's almost always above you or below you, no matter how well placed your shot is. So it, it can be challenging. Do you think that's, uh, which I, I like that take. Do you think that's the solution for uh distance on the course is like the PGA. They're always fighting distance just to tuck it and do better cuts as opposed to just trying to find 50 acres to extend the course. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, we we definitely need to extend our course as well. I, but that we're landlocked. I mean, at the absolute most, I think we might be able to add 150 yards to our course, and that's probably it. That's maxed out. There's we're just landlocked. There's nowhere else to go unless we just blew the place up and did a total reconstruction, which I think would be a horrible mistake. Um, but I, yeah, I mean, I mean, there's no technically speaking, there's no such thing as an illegal pin. Um, now I'm not saying you need to put it on a five and a half percent slope. Um, that would be, that would be atrocious. Uh, that would be a fail. Um, but no, I, I think that you can, if, if the superintendent's given the freedom, I think that they can make the course as pretty much as difficult as needed. And it, you have to gauge that depending on the tournament that you're hosting or the event that you're hosting. In some cases, you know, we just have, um, we'll have a couple of, uh, companies that come out and just, They'll have a, a corporate party out here with 15 or 20 guys. And that particular day, you know, the, the CEO or whatever gets with me and was like, hey, man, juice it up. I want it as hard as it could be. OK, that's not a problem. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's it, I mean, you know, uh, it, fast greens. I mean, you can turn the greens up almost infinitely, really, if you do the right things. Um, but you also don't want to play silly golf, you know, um, yeah. three Three years ago, Sunday of member guest, um, we I had to go. I had to stimp. I think it was seven or eight greens before I could find a piece that was flat enough and long enough to get a number. And we were like fifteen one or fifteen two. Is is it was stupid. It was dumb. Um, we we I let him. That, that's that's that got out of hand. Uh, that's that's too fast. <laughs> that's way too fast. Um, it was like putting on on Glass. a granite countertop. Yeah, yeah. I think I think if you're really wanting like primo uh, tournament conditions, you know, 13, 13 and a half, that's fast enough. That's especially with how undulated some of our greens are. 
almost every single green is pitched in one direction or another. Um, downhill putts can be screaming. Do you have a favorite hole on the course that when you see it, you're like, this is my dream design. I love it every time I see it. Um, so number four to me, um, it's probably not a lot of a real popular hole for a lot of golfers. The entire fairway is pitched to the right, um, the right side, the player's right side. Um, probably, probably 20 or 25 degree. It's a big, it's a big, I mean, you hit the top of the fairway and you're down in the bottom if it's dry. I mean, no matter it, we can have the, the fairways at three quarters of an inch and you're probably going to roll all the way to the bottom. Um, and then you get into that rough that's on the, on the right side. that can be kind of thick. Um, it's a hole that we were able to put our thumbprint on, uh, th- almost three years ago, I guess. Um, no, no, that it was two years ago. So th- there's two left-hand bunkers, left-hand side bunkers or were, and those bunkers were underneath some pine trees and we were losing the battle to the pine trees. We would go through every year, it seemed like, and we were cutting out two and three inch roots. Somebody was going to get hurt at some point. They were very, they were, it was a weird placement. I don't know why they had put them there. It was architecturally, it was speaking, it was just, it's an, it was odd. Um, and so we filled those bunkers in. Um, and we, we wound up putting what, what we have deemed muffin tops. And it's an area where we've got the, the grass grown up four or five inches. Um, so there's still danger on the left side. And uh, there's four, I think there's four, um, no, there's five uh, muffin tops on the left side of that hole. That can be dangerous if you get over there just like it would a uh, bunker. We've got a couple of those around um, the golf course so that it gives a flow to the golf course. And, you know, I want a little bit of repetition in the golf course to tie the place in so that you're not going on one hole and be like, what, you know, what is this? It's like, mm-hmm. it's like going to hole 15 and seeing a Chinese pistache tree. You're like, where, where did that come from? Why is that here? <laughs> I haven't seen that before. Um, so I, I like the golf course to kind of resemble itself as you're playing it. But I, I definitely would say number four at uh, probably six thirty, seven o'clock at night. You can sit there and watch this. The, the river is directly behind that hole. You can't see the river, um, but that's the direction you're looking. And you get to watch the sunset behind the trees. It's, it's a beautiful hole, especially later in the day. Um, you, y'all have hosted the, um, the GSGA Junior. Uh, is that right? In Correct. The junior long, and the how senior. How long has that been? Yep. Okay. How long um, that that was, so we hosted those back-to-back years. I believe it was... Uh, 20, I think it was 22 and 23. Okay. Um, the junior was last year. The senior was the year prior to that. Um, that was, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. I remember seeing stuff about the junior. Uh, do you, do you think, um, stuff like that'll keep happening? I hope so. Um, I hope so. It really depends on the club, depends on the green committees, depends on the board. Um, you know, we were, we were, we've been approached for some other pretty big tournaments. I don't know if. I'm, I'm probably, I won't get into it. I don't know if I'm allowed to say uh, what tournaments, but we've been approached about some other big tournaments, and unfortunately, we, you know, the 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 leadership here decided to to say no um, to turn those down. Um, it's you know not a not a real big deal. It's just the flavor of whatever the the membership at that time is desiring. Um, sometimes clubs don't want to go through the headache of hosting a big tournament. You know, from our perspective, it's a lot of fun. Um, but you get a lot of practice rounds leading up in the tournament. It causes, it interferes with member play, which can be an issue. Um, and also, you know, if it's a, if it's a weekend tournament, you're losing four days of member play, um, you know, Thursday through Sunday. So it, you know, I I think we'll get, definitely get more GSGA events for sure. Um, in the future. Uh, I hope so anyway. So we really enjoy hosting those. I love being a part of that. It's nice that the, club is willing to kind of protect the member play as well because i know some places is whatever's willing who's ever willing to pay to come right yes and then some it's nobody at all and then it's nice to have that mix say hey we want our members to have this opportunity to play this weekend and hey next weekend y'all come host it right right and then the course and show it off yeah yeah, and and that's you know when I when I look at it, that's how I'm I'm wanting the course to get recognition. Um, I want my guy, my my staff to get recognition for their hard work. Um, but 
you know, sometimes it doesn't work out. And our membership is very, very good at, at giving them the recognition they deserve as well. It's not a, it, they are very, very thankful uh, for the staff that we have here and they show it all the time. It's, it's, it's really a good situation. I'm very blessed. And, you know, I thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ every single day uh, that I'm able to be the superintendent of Green Island. It's a blessing. Um, I know it gets uh, extremely hot down here in the summer, so I've got a, yeah. a good question to ask you here. Um, what is your favorite time of the year to operate? And, uh, like, does this have any effect on, like, what kind of or what time frame y'all uh, do course changes and renovation projects? Yeah, I would say it's a tie between probably late May, early June, and then probably mid to late October. Those are those are our two best times. Um, you know, the latter, you know, late October, it's it's really easy to pull speeds out of the greens. Um, with, with, there's not a lot of effort into into getting speeds up, and I'm, I like fast greens. Um, and it's you know you've got the the setting around us. Um, leaves changing and, and the cool the coolness in the air um, that's a, that's a really magical time of the year for sure and then late May early June um, I would say that is probably uh, that would probably be my favorite time that's leading up to member guests member guests would be the second week in June that would be my favorite time of the year um, the club allots us uh, a significantly uh, a significant more amount of overtime uh, two three weeks leading up to member guests. So we're able to get the golf. We're able to do things on the golf course that we can't do on a weekly basis throughout the year. So that is a very special time. The golf course really starts to show out. Um, when you put that many hours, labor hours into the golf course, it starts to, it starts to pop. It, it goes off for sure. Every time Brent sends a snap, it's just green. And that's, <laughs> that's all you can say. It's just so green and wet. Uh, he's probably and throwing weird. a filter on that thing or something. <laughs> <laughs> He's a big lover of it. He is. He is, man. He, and that's the thing, you know, um, we, Brent is not, um, a, a singular, uh, phenomenon here that we've got multiple guys that feel about the golf course like that. They're passionate about it. Um, you know, Brent's got family, his brother, um, I forget where he's an assistant at right now, somewhere up in Drew. Atlanta, Drew at Hills. That's right. Um, so he, I mean, he's, he's ate up with it, man. He loves it. He loves it out here. He loves being a part, um, of the big stuff, you know? Um, but just like today, you know, today we, we threw a weed in his hands and he just went out and killed it. Um, he gets it, man. And, and not just Brent, it's a lot of our staff. They all get it. They, they're just, I couldn't ask for a better staff. I couldn't ask for a better crew. They're really, really good guys. <clears throat> Uh, a few months ago, you posted a video on your YouTube channel uh, uh, describing the Rapid Threes. Uh, yeah. I, it's the first time I've ever heard of this, and uh, it looked really cool. Uh, I thought, you know, that's a really good idea. Is is that something that uh, you come up with, or have you? did you see some that somewhere else? No, no. I had to, had to steal that one. Um, so I worked at a club up in, up in um, uh, Memphis called Spring Creek Ranch, and they had um, – a similar thing set up and they called it the hidden threes. Um, and it, it's, a, it's essentially, it's exactly what we have, except they've got a lot more. Um, we had a lot more, uh, native grass grasslands that surrounded the holes. So they truly were hidden. You had to know, like they had to put a map out for you to go find them. Um, you know, if you, if they just said, go to, go to one, you know, number one, par three, you had no idea where that was at. This is, it's just a cool amenity that we've added to the golf course. You know, we don't have the biggest uh, practice facility. And so this kind of gives our juniors a, a, a way to jump out as long as they're not, obviously, you know, the 18 holer golfer is going to take precedence over somebody playing uh, the rapid threes. But if there's nobody out on the golf course, it's five o'clock in the evening and you've got only got an hour and a half, two hours to burn before dinner or something like that. And you can go out and play. There's right now we have six. If it if it becomes a hit, we're going to do six on the back. So we'll have a twelve hole par three course built into our golf course, um, and it ranges anywhere from seventy eight yards. Right now it's seventy eight yards all the way out to two hundred and twenty yards. So it's it's a fun little a, a fun little uh, course to go out there and just just play. We've got these mats set up uh, so that that area doesn't get chewed up with divots. Um, and I know not everyone's you know crazy about playing off of a mat, but that's just how we have them set up. And 
so far, I mean, the people that have played it um, have have enjoyed it. It's, it's been it's been a cool experience. So yeah, I, I stole that idea for sure. <laughs> That's uh that was something cool I saw. Um, you know that that'd be awesome if it you know even got further down to like being at every other golf course because like uh you know you try to find time to go out like in the afternoons and sometimes you don't want to just go sit on the range and uh, beat balls for right. an hour and, and that's a good right. way to you know really just you can basically walk that and uh yeah. not have to really worry about hitting hitting a driver and you know just go out there and hit some balls and uh, see where your game's at and I, I like that a lot i think a lot of us are more in tune with stuff like that nowadays too and it, it's really cool that you i mean if you had a junior that's you know eight, nine, ten years old that's just getting into golf, you can make them all par fours and have him go out there and, you know, play a, uh, you know, 160-yard par four. And I think that's a great way to introduce people uh, into the game of golf. So I, I, we've had a couple ladies go play it that enjoyed it. Um, the, the, our um, number four, our 220-yard par three, they play that as a four um, just because it is significantly long for a lady uh, to play as a par three. But, yeah, it's – I like it. I think it's a good idea. It was a hit up in up in Memphis, and I, I think it'll slowly become a hit here the more people play it. There's still even that video, and we've posted in. You know, we have a publication we put out called the Islander every month. Even after all that, um, we still have tons of people that we talk to almost on a daily basis. Like, what? What is that? What? You know, I, I hit it left of one. There's a mat over there. What is that for? Uh, <laughs> so there's still a lot of people that don't even know about it yet. So as it as it, as it slowly gets out, I think it'll become. Uh, more and more popular. Zach, do you have anything else? No, I'm I'm excited to have the opportunity just to come out. Yeah, man. I'm, seriously, you guys need to come out over the next month. You know, give it give us another like two weeks. Um, we're we're lining up some of our summer help, putting more hours into the golf course. Um, you know, we got this little cold front, this little cold dip that we're in right now, but. I'm seeing a, a nine. We've got a 90 next week, so excited about that. Once we get up there, and you know, nightly uh, lows are in the upper 60s. That's it's game on. Let's go. So you you guys need to come out, man. We'd love to have you. You pick a day. Be, uh, I'll charge the drone, and we'll be ready. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah I mean, I absolutely. To be, I want it to be slick. Like I, I don't want it to be that 15, but I want it to be like you know pushing 13 somewhere around there. Yeah. Give it. Teeth. Give us another like two weeks. Yeah. You guys come out, come out like mid May, and we'll 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 definitely we'll have we'll have a good time for sure. We'll get it ready for you guys. Sounds good. Uh, well, I appreciate. I know we all appreciate your time, Garrett. Uh, we'll definitely share everything uh, on our social and uh, keep in touch. Absolutely, appreciate you guys having me. No, thank yes, you. Sir. It's always nice to get a different insight of the course compared to just going to from box to green every time. Right, right. Yeah, man, I, it's 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 good to good to spread the word for sure. Fix your ball marks and fill your divots, please. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, I appreciate it, Garrett. Thank you so much. Uh, all right, thank y'all. See ya. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are back. That was Garrett Tillman. Uh, Superintendent Green Island Country Club. Thanks so much for coming on. Uh, we plan to go there soon. Highlight it. Get you some nice green footage. Yes. And, <laughs> and enjoy it. I hope he can go with us when we play. I do too. It would be great yeah. to play it, but I'd love to play and like say, what do you think of this? What What would you change of this? And get him all fair. Because I know sometimes when you're interviewing people, you can only say so much one way or the other. That's very true. You can't be off the collar. Yeah, yeah. But following up, so last week um, we had, shoot, what was the event? The RBC Heritage. Scotty right. wins again. I, I was telling my Never buddy, we're, we're going to have to <laughs> outlaw picking Nelly and Scotty. They're too good right now. Yeah. I looked back at our uh, LPGA picks and all We've four of all us picked have... Nelly at one <laughs> point in this won. five win run. Yeah. And I mean, she's gotten us all good points though. Yeah. She's, she's as good a golfer as you can be. I think yeah, if she yeah. was a man uh, for the distance, her and Scotty would be Phil and Tiger. Yeah, for sure. They'd be they'd be having some crazy uh down the stretch right, battles right now I would imagine, but nobody really did great on the picks except Mitch had uh, Ludwig, 
Yeah, yeah. But he was he, hot he's for kind the of Masters. Like solid, yeah, he's solid. Um, I yeah, I, I kind of looked at uh, I Zalatoris played good. That's who I had picked, and uh, he played good at the Masters. And I just thought, you know, he might be riding off of that, but he's still getting his, his feet back under him. After he had a back injury. That's right. He had um one like a similar surgery that uh Tiger did like um back when he was having all his like one of those spinal fusion things I I believe. I yeah, that'd wrong. be awful. I tell Johnny from yeah. time to time like my back hurts from where I heard it playing softball and I'm like, what if I got surgery and then I can never swing again? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's one of them. It's like unknown. It's like can you just live with the pain and a couple of ibuprofen or? Yeah. Can I talk to Tiger's doctor? I know he's <laughs> got to be in my network. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. But uh, this, week this week we have we... the Zurich Classic. Uh, where is it at? I didn't even put. Um, are you looking in the outline? Uh uh-uh. uh. I'm, I'm on the Zurich Classic. It's in TPC, Louisiana. Down in New Orleans. By you, baby. It's a team event. Um, is it best ball? I assume. Yeah, I believe it's a uh, yeah best ball. Uh, between the you, you, there's two two partners on one team. <laughs> yeah, so, not to get too confusing there. I couldn't think of what I was trying to say. Yeah, <laughs> so it's best <laughs> ball. Um, I'm going Sepp Straka, um, who's been on a tear lately. I feel like he was kind of yeah. unheard of, in the in the, in the big names. But his yeah, scoring his lately name. has been hot, so I'm hoping he can carry Bryce Garnett up. <laughs> um, I'm jumping around trying to find the picks. Uh, I know Mitchell picked Will Zalatoris and Sahith. Um, you picked Rory, Shane Lowry, yes. and then <laughs> Casey picked No Pat, No No Hat Pat, and Xander. Yep. But it, it's gotten I tight. I was looking at the pickums. And Mitch is doing a lot better than I thought he was. Yeah, he's made a lot of ground up uh picking Scotty for the Masters and then uh we lost a lot. <laughs> we lost a lot of points that I have. Lost a lot. <laughs> and I I felt like I had a 100 stroke lead on everybody except you. Yeah. And now I'm in the lead at 192 under. You're second at 161 under. Mitch is third at 158. Oh, my God. He's only three and, strokes by. And Casey's at 84 under. So, I, oh God. by the way it's going, I mean, which obviously it can change, but I feel like Casey's going to play an actual event filmed <laughs> with a, a walking time. caddy. Yeah, yeah. The LPGA pulled up by chance. Uh, for their event this week? Did they have an event this week? Because I know they're coming off the major. I didn't even check, honestly. Uh, when's the JM Eagle? See, I I should have put the dates on all this stuff, and this so that we'd know. But I don't, it is so hard to keep up so, with the women. It is. They take like two weeks off, and they come back, and then they have a major and they're around then, the world. <laughs> yeah, um, I have no. It, oh, it's this weekend. Oh, we need to make some picks. Yeah, we can do that. that. We'll April twenty fifth. We'll have to uh, just put that in the in the graphic on Instagram. Yeah, because <laughs> none of us have made picks for that yet. No, I I didn't know it was this weekend. I had no okay, idea. I'm going Z U N. I'm just gonna pick the favorite. <laughs> I picked it's her before, Blair. and she was over par. <laughs> I. I think she played well this past week uh, at that major, the Chevron. Uh, looking at the odds, Z is the favorite. Ayaka Furu. Furoy. Furoy. Si Young Kim. Jin Young Ko. Is it more of a Korean game for um, the LPGA? Is it just more women? I mean, I know it's uh, there's a lot of Americans in it now, but... Was it hotter internationally for the LPGA than the women historically? I, I believe it has been, especially in the last like 15, 20 years, I think. Because, uh, you know, TaylorMade was bought 
last year by a Korean brand. I remember that. Yeah, and that's the first time I've actually thought about that since you, uh, since I remember seeing that. I'm just here but with nuggets. Very interesting. I just, yeah, I just got nuggets. If you got the sauce to dip, I'll throw some nuggets out. <laughs> but yeah, that I think that's it for episode 99. This time next yeah, week, my, we'll be at 100. I'm ready. My uh, my pick for the LPGA is going to have to be TBD. I'll I'll make a better prediction later, but uh, I'm excited for next week. Uh, it's hard to not pick there. Nelly. <laughs> <laughs> I know she's. Yeah, she's. If I was she, her, I wouldn't be there. But what about Scotty? <laughs> I don't know. Danny Rapp was talking. He said, yeah, he he come in on Wednesday night, played nine holes, started Thursday with a two under, and then just turned it on. Yeah. And I thought he might actually withdraw last week from the Masters. Like I was like, his wife's got – she's only eight months pregnant. She's yeah, not even nine saying, yet. They they kind of they kind of like dialed that up a little bit for – some drama, I think. And yeah, it she's, she's not even nine months pregnant, so she's not even at her yeah. due date or anything. She still probably got they, three more weeks because Joni went to, to 40 weeks and five days with Marley. Wow. So, I mean, you can go past. Yeah. I think that's it. Episode 99. We're going to be rock and rolling live next week. So, everybody, uh, everybody join us. We'll have a good time. Probably no food to. BYOF, bring your own food. <laughs> BYOB, too. Yeah, I don't, know. I don't know if they'll allow that in the store, but. <laughs> you can bring sodas. Yeah, yeah. And there's a gas station nearby. What you have in your cup is what you got in your cup. That's all I know. <laughs> all right. Well, that's, that wraps it up for this episode. Uh, we'll see y'all next week. Like, subscribe, follow.